Hey there! If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. I'll say that again. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast, oh, yep, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Now it's time for the Big Bad Broadcast. <laughs> well, welcome to the Big Bad Broadcast No Frills Friday. The Tyrannosaurus Rex is angry, and we've got a show. We got Mike Grief. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Craig. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, real? okay, 1 o'clock? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Grief, and hey. straight from the Encino lineup, we got suspect Craig. Let's look into his past. No, oh, I'm, let's see. What look. Did he... oh. oh, look. I've never don't done don't. anything. I've never done. I've never done anything wrong. <laughs> ever. I'm I'm innocent until. No, you might have the tea, by the way. Well, I think we we're going to need to explain what's going on, Craig. Come oh. on, man. Where where were you? Or do you want me to? Skin? Or do you want me to explain it? Go ahead, John. Explain. I it. Thought, I, thought I see an oh. Uber driver. His name is Craig, driving a passenger. Who murdered somebody? Oh, the, I didn't mean to kill him. The, the cops were coming. I, I had to hide the knife, so I, I put it in his back. I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> well, that's not really exactly what happened. What what happened was? Oh, see, he has firsthand information. Yeah, I know every guilty. Guilty. That's not really guilty. what happened. Guilty. What, Dexter? John, I'm already practicing when they ask me about him. Oh, he was a he was a quiet, quiet man. He was a quiet, Always quiet nice. Yeah, never yeah. never bothered anybody. And, you, and when they interview, and you ever notice on those shows like Law and Order, whenever they interview somebody who's like guilty of murder, they never stop working. Like if they're stacking like if they're stuck, stacking bags of concrete. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I was on Tuesday. I mean, he, why did, why did, I would stop. Like I, when the guy called me, I shit my pants. I was like, yeah. what? Don't See, make no, don't no, make no. light of the kids. In a couple of months, you're gonna be stacking rocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out it turns out that it wasn't just me. Oh, okay. oh then, you're a part oh, of a you, ring. Oh, you you're a part of a murder days. ring. Looks like we're getting a confession right here. Bump bump. Bon, yeah, yeah. And, and well, the first thing when they called me, they go, "Craig, look, this is Detective Blah 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 from the Blah 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 Police Department." Oh, I'm I I wouldn't have believed him right there. Yeah, come on. A guy gets out right hey, there. Blah, blah, blah. From yeah, the okay. blah, blah, blah department. I would have hung Honestly, up. Honestly, John, you, you've never been to blah, blah, California, have you? <laughs> Hi, I'm suspect, blah, blah, blah. Come but on. he said, but he goes, don't worry. You're you're not in trouble. And I'm thinking back to every episode of Law and Order I ever saw. When they say you're not in trouble, the next thing is dong, dong. And they, Wait a minute. I didn't do nothing. You know. <laughs> as long as he didn't leave the room and go, wait a second. See, nobody knows what we're talking about. I'm yeah, well, no one knows what we're talking about. So nobody why don't you clear this up? Explain thing. your kill so we can the people yes. know what they're talking about. Tell my well, turtle. Nobody Tell has seen my, my roommate turtle. since he moved out in June. Mm-hmm. All right. No, okay. Seriously, this is a serious issue that we need to clear up. I thought something was funny when Craig asked me where he could buy a lie. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I was dig- I was thinking, look, it's a wing. <laughs> hey, I got a leg. <laughs> Tell the turtle the truth. Tell the, the, the turtle of truth. That's You'll feel doing. better. Tell the turtle the truth. It was me. They they were calling all the rideshare drivers in the area mm. uh, in case they had some. It was. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Sure. All of, all of them. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It wasn't just me. 
And there's why. Is, what, what I'm saying is people don't understand. Race. People don't understand what's going on. Why are the police calling you? They, they were looking for somebody who was overweight, 61, in a Ford Fusion. So mm. to anybody. Because they couldn't believe that you'd fit in a Ford Fusion. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that would be my Honda Fit. Thank you very much. I had a Honda All right. Fit. Oh, wait, wait. Come on. Seriously. Talk about the crime you committed. I didn't commit any crime, John. <laughs> You know, you, you put some. Why are they looking? Why are they interviewing Uber drivers? Because uh, to bring him over to Lyft. What was that? To get him to work for Lyft. Oh my God! No, they're, they're, anybody in rideshare who may have dash cam footage because Uber volunteers that I have a dash cam that might have seen a car that was coming. I guess from a murder scene. From a murder Not scene. Me. Wow. From a murder scene. So you were coming from a murder scene. So you just dropped that like casually. I was picking up somebody from a murder scene. Yeah. The fact that he was covered with blood and carrying a big knife, I didn't it, see nothing. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's California, man. It's you know, it, he might have been a butcher. I don't know. <laughs> might have been a butcher. Every Friday, what are you doing? I was just leaving the murder scene, and uh, you know. But, you know, it's kind of... All right, let's, let's back this whole story up. I mean, seriously. Oh, I like serious, backing up. No, Keep going. On a serious note, right? How much has the world changed that the murderer had to take an Uber <laughs> to go kill somebody because he couldn't afford a cab? <laughs> he couldn't afford a cab. <laughs> and think about it. You know, how do I get to this murder scene? Oh, I'll put my personal information into this app and then call a ride so they know exactly where I am, exactly what time and what car I'm in. But I don't think I, I don't think it's the case though. But yeah, I think you're gonna feel stupid when you get to prison and you're like, not you, but I'm talking about the 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 the, the guilty person to, because they're like they're like, what are you? You're like you're like a discount killer. You're not even you don't even come on, man. Rent a car, man. Go to Hertz. Rent a car. You don't need to take an Uber. You're gonna kill somebody. Make it like an experience, you know. I mean, robbers. You know, we've talked about it on the show. You know, a lot of criminals are not the brightest uh, star in the galaxy. (laughs) I mean, they do some pretty dumb ass things. There was a story recently I read that a guy was in California and he was in the HOV lane. Is that what they call it? HIV lane. No, the HOV lane. Oh, sorry. And uh, he was the only one driving. But he was a undertaker and he had a body in the back. Technically, it counts. So they went to court, and he said, you know, you're going to say that the dead person was no longer a person. He's still a person to the family. Well, but that's what HOV means, high occupancy. It doesn't say you have to be alive. High occupancy vehicle. Well, I don't know. I mean, the case went on for a while, and then finally they said, yeah, you know, I guess you're wasting the court's time, you know. We won't give you a ticket, you know. Yeah, got off. Crazy. There's so many crazy stories. I read a story this week about these two Russian guys that were cannibals. And they, yeah, they ate this guy. They ate this guy completely. They murdered him to to eat him. And Wait, no, they murdered specifically just to eat him. To eat him, yes. I guess he looked good, you know. (laughs) Hey, this guy looks delicious. Look at this. Come on. Put, an apple, put some vodka sauce on him. Put an apple in it. Vodka sauce. Look delicious. How do so you wait, pick, wait. How do you pick somebody to eat? I, mean, I don't know. I was well, wondering. I was wondering how much he looked like. I was wondering how much he weighed. How much he weighed? Oh, that's a two mealer. <laughs> anyway, so they they grabbed this guy, right? And the cops were they kind of suspected these guys were the murderers. So that it was like a high speed chase. In Russia, it was like 30 miles an hour. And the guy skidded off the road, hit a tree. The trunk flew open, and a body fell out with a head. And the two guys, instead of running, ran to the guy, kneeled over, and started eating the guy in front of the cop. And the cop was like, what are you doing? And they go, we're not wasting this. Yeah. You got us. And then the cop goes, would you eat everybody you saw? And the guy actually said to the cop, why, is there anybody else? Oh, no, come on. <laughs> I swear, it's in the paper. Oh, so it's got to be true then. It's got to yeah. be true. <laughs> it's got, the guy looked delicious. So, in other words, these guys are just roaming around looking for somebody to eat. And they look yeah. at the guy down and go, so, buddy, what's eating you? Oh, what I, oh. 
<laughs> what I want to said, you start at the head, I'll start at the legs. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball. I really want to know what's the criteria for picking out somebody you're going to eat. I know. Yeah. I know one. Well, I'm not hygiene. talking about a sexual. Hygiene. I'm not talking about hygiene. Hygiene. Yeah, hygiene. Well, believe. you can always wash down, you know, your 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 meal, but uh, well, why not? I mean, it's like a buffet. If you well, that's true. That's true. Because washed. if if a person's a dirty bastard, you got to know they probably eat dirty shit and they probably lived a dirty life. Well, I would it's, imagine that if you were a muscle guy or a muscle woman, that would be no kind of, that would be probably pretty tough. Muscle and they got to they got to they got to be uncut. You totally need. You need Actually, somebody like Silky, like a bit, like raised like a lamb. You know what? You probably want somebody who's eating crappy shit their whole life. Like, look at the most delicious thing: shrimps and lobsters. They're bottom feeders, right? They eat. Well, that's shit. such a great joke. It went right over my head. No, I, I heard it. I mean, but, no, say it again. Let me hear it. I got. I got to find someone like Silky that was raised like a lamb. No, actually, Joe is closer to veal. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Boy, so is, then, there's another so story in the. It's another so, story of the news. That oh, wait Disney... a minute. And Joe didn't show up today. Yeah. So maybe that's say, who we... Craig is being suspended. Craig, where is Joe? Oh, yeah. Where is Joe? That's what I want. Where's Joe? Mm-hmm. You know, actually, Joe hasn't been actually, here for a couple of weeks. I know. But actually, I heard from Joe today. He had his booster shot. Oh, yeah, did he sound like so... Craig? Hi, everybody. It's uh, John. This is Joe. I'm, I'm doing okay. You don't have to worry about me. I'm going to be in um, uh, uh, probably out of the, the States for a while. He told me when the phone came in, he told me he was calling from Craig's house. It's Craig's number. Oh, well, that's because he gave, he gave me the trick handcuffs. That's why he gave it, me the trick said handcuffs. said Craig Mitchell, and I heard, it's Joe Silky. I'm really sick. Come on, and Craig's a cook. Come on, what was what did you cook, Joe? With I ate his liver with some fava baba. <laughs> All right, so there's a very expensive zebra that escaped that escaped for the Maryland Zoo. What do you is mean it, expensive? Aren't they all expensive? No, this is a pretty rare one for some reason. Where do you, stripes, get, where do you get a cheap zebra anyway? It had know? stripes on it, I guess. <laughs> it had stripes. What was it like candy stripes? By the way, they put out a thing that they need to catch the zebra. A guy set a snare, <laughs> caught it on his property, but it died. Oh, oh man. <laughs> and they said, it... yeah, he caught it on his private property. Snared the thing to death. Well, what was, I want to know what was special about this zebra. I mean, maybe instead of black and there? white stripes, it had white and black stripes. The headline is an investigation underway to determine who set the snare trap that killed the zebra. On his Maryland private property. Was this in Russia? Did they jump? Somebody eat it? No, it's Maryland. Is in Maryland. Russia? Maryland, which can be Russia, I guess, uh, depending on what side of the tracks you're on. I guess so. I don't know. Uh, but, but what what did the snare do that would kill a zebra? What kind? Well, of, it depends. It must have been. Really, it must have been. It wasn't a snare. Like a snare is a is um, is, is, is is a like a string rope wire. This probably was one of those bear traps or something no, like that. It could that. be a snare. It could be they Maybe said it go around its death. neck and choked it to death. That's true. They got oh, garroted. We garroted the zebra. Garroted. Yeah. Hey, take I just take take the donuts. Leave the zebra. I'm just I'm just curious what makes it what made it so rare. Really, really. I mean, I'm thinking. You ever see the the good and good and fruity bubble gum where it's maybe maybe it was like a rainbow striped zebra. Maybe, maybe it was, it was a famous like zebra. Famous zebra, like zebra three on Starsky and Hutch. There you go. Hey. Maybe he was zebra three. You know, zebra three. Yeah. All right, listen to this story. <laughs> this one you're not going like to believe. Where we were going with that at all? Did no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, this came up. <laughs> I have this thing that these stories come up, and it came up while you guys were talking. No, I come up all the time. Hey, city John is doesn't... taking its official wizard. Off. A New Zealand yeah. city is taking its official wizard. Off the payroll after two decades. Oh, that's bullshit. Chris, Christian Church, New Zealand, is parting ways with their official city wizard for more than two decades. His offensive remarks about women and local government new tourism strategy reportedly spelled his doom. Ian Blackenberry Chanel, known as the Wizard of New Zealand, apparently has an official <laughs> document and passports, been on a salary for $16,000. That's and eleven thousand in currency to provide acts of wizardry, among other 
Wizard like service and promotional work for the city. Jeez. Black a wizard. Try, try, try collecting unemployment if you're a wizard. And you got to see what this, I don't know if you can see what this guy looks like. Oh, my God. It's um, like, can you imagine showing up to the unemployment office? You know, it's like, are you are you looking for work? <laughs> All you have to do is just, uh, yeah. just go to the manhole on Saturday nights and you see that. Seriously. The, the manhole. Is the that manhole. That's a gay bar? Well, what do you think? They're not gay in that place. You know, what was that? that was like an old David Tell line. He's like, you know, I didn't know that, you know, Ram rod me in the ass. I didn't know it was a gay bar, you know. <laughs> like, there's lots of there's lots of wizards at the manhole. There's <laughs> lots of I don't so we so dressing up as a wizard, it's a that's a big uh uh big well, guy actually the thought he was a wizard. Very popular. The, the guy popular. thought he was a wizard. Wow what was see, Blackberry Chanel, you said? Yeah. Is that kind of a funny name? Ben and Jerry's. Seriously. Brackenberry Chanel. Chanel. John just got another one. Brackenberry Chanel. Yeah. Brackenberry I, Chanel. I am Blackenberry Chanel. I am. I am Blackenberry Chanel. I am or Iron. Iron. I R O N. Iron. Shouldn't it be Ian? Shouldn't it be Ian? Ian Blackenberry Chanel. And they have a little line over it. It looks like it's spelled. He pronounces it as Ian. It may be an Australian thing. You shall not pass gas. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's where they shot the Lord of the Rings in New Zealand. In so New Zealand. Maybe. Well, there you go. He's so, uh, so, so I know, I know John's obviously I hear them popping up, but uh, we didn't. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? We didn't get to talk about any of any of that stuff. I had an amazing Thanksgiving with Lane's Merge. Oh, Lane's no. Merge made an appearance. Made an appearance. And. Oh, yeah, he. I I don't know what he talked about all day. Didn't make any sense. Well, we haven't just just to be clear, we haven't mentioned Lane's merge on the Big Bad broadcast. We he was on our other show. Maybe we should explain who he is. Well, everyone knows who Lane's merge is. He's, he's yeah. a world famous lounge it's like singer Elvis from, from the sixties, oh, seventies. You know, I mean, there's no more famous lounge singer than Lane's merge. That's true, but there might be some who are un, unindoctrinated. He actually said he's going to check with his manager and might be able to come by. To do a Christmas song on our Christmas show. No. Oh, an actual Lane's Merge song on yeah, the show? He's, yeah, he's going to send a video. Hey. And, and <laughs> him, that's that's very cool. And, uh, is he uh, showing up with his wizard? <laughs> Ian, Ian will be there. I got a wizard in my pants. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. You're a and wizard. they... Um, yeah, it was really, really nice Thanksgiving. My daughter came home, which was nice. She was in uh, she was in Guadalupe, and the whole island is uh, protesting. The whole island? Had, yeah, the whole island is protesting COVID vaccinations. Oh, God. The cops are vaccinated. The cops aren't vaccinated. The firemen are. So the firemen are turning their hoses on. On the cops. Is this another and, gay bar we're talking about? And then <laughs> and then the other thing is my daughter says it's like have you ever seen the movie Les Mis? No. I guess that's the way French people protest. They pile everything out on the street, cars, everything, they set it on fire. And then they they let it burn at early morning so you can't get through. So all the roads are kind of closed. So you so burn I, you burn your own shit to protest? Yeah, yeah. They take everything they throw in the street and burn it. And then they had to take a boat back to the around the island to get their stuff, and then a boat back to the airport basically to get out of there. And then Ralph had to stay two extra days, but he just got in yesterday. So it was nice seeing my daughter for Thanksgiving, and then I went to see Chris's daughter for Thanksgiving, which was like a vegan Thanksgiving. Right. Which I was vegan. I was really kind of scared. What is a vegan Thanksgiving? It was, you know, it wasn't any different, really, because they did make a turkey. They had something called a celebration meatloaf, which is plant, which was plant based. And they asked me if I wanted any, and I told them no. Looking at it, there was nothing to celebrate. I, I celebrate meatloaf every day. Celebration meatloaf. We're back at the gay bar again. Celebrate meatloaf. Come on. Let's celebrate. And uh, yeah, it was good. It was really, it was really delicious. And I went to a um, a medieval festival. Oh, I love Jesus! Oh, this is a long Thanksgiving. No, it's like three day weekend. Oh, okay. And um, that was pretty weird. I mean, I hadn't been one in years. I saw the jousting. That was oh, very cool. Love the Renaissance Fair, man. Thanksgiving, man. 
And, uh, you know, I said to Chris, I, you know, some of these people, it, to me, it's a comedy show. It's like the nerds of the world get to dress up like characters. And I said to her, where else could the listen nerdiest to guy? The jealousy. Was, where was, else it there? Could, was, was Huckleberry there? Where, was, where else could the nerdiest guy you know walk around and feel cool with a big sword on his belt? Dude, let me tell you something. Those guys on the horseback carrying those javelins, yeah. they are, those are not nerds. Those are pretty much. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the people that visit, that have little prosthetic ears and they dress around like fairies. Oh, those people. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a they're minute. They're part of a troupe. They're usually actors. They're, they're like. No, they're no. Actors. These are just people. These are people pushing baby characters with little elf ears. Oh. And Maybe baby Vulcans. Yeah, and yeah, people all had little yeah. horns on their heads, and so how do you feel bizarre. about people who go to Comic Con and dress up? Are they yeah, kind of... they're another weirdos. <laughs> I, I personally have never made it to Comic Con, but if I was going to go to Comic Con, I would dress up. I don't know as what, you know, but uh, but and I think of the Renaissance. I love the Renaissance Fair. I'd love to. Dr- well, I Mike, think those people have, have to... balls to dress up like that, Mike. You'd have to go as the Punisher. You definitely would. The Punisher. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know. It was it was interesting. So what about you, Craig? What the hell? What did you do with yourself? Well, besides you know, kill the guy in uh, wherever that was. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> this 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 is my first thing. After you murdered, what did you do? Yeah. Just... Well, I had two, turkey. I had two Russian guys over and we feasted. <laughs> so, you know, it was my first Thanksgiving without my roommate in seven years. Without a roommate in seven years, so I. I, I was alone. Um, I did. I, I made a turkey dinner. I decorated. But, you know, even though I wasn't with my family, you know, uh, we did text each other insults. So it felt like we were together. There you go. As long as my family tells me to go fuck myself. I mean, John I Choke, I think. As long as my, every year when my family. No, it's not a spin take. Every year when my family reinstates the order of protection, I just feel so loved. <laughs> Just, just, that's how I know. It's like it must be the holidays. They've they've reinforced these. The, There's so much joke, love. My other joke was going to be: it's very tough to get people to come to a gay household on Thanksgiving because stuffing has so many different meanings. You want some stuffing? No thanks. It's all right. <laughs> oh man! And what did you do, Mike? For Thanksgiving, it was nice. It was just quiet, you know. We uh, we we bought a uh, turkey and all the. I've been doing the no carb thing, you know, to 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 lose some, because you know I was in Florida uh, for my mother's ninetieth birthday. I mean, like tough, and so I came home. I gained like ten pounds there. So I came home doing the no carb. So so I cheated for Thanksgiving and for, ate my body's way. I told you my my dream on Thanksgiving, which is my favorite meal. It's to I want to be eating. And on a toilet at the same time. I want there to be one continuous line of food. <laughs> you know how they have daylight. Bell, Mike. <laughs> What's that? Bell. You know how they have daylight savings time. Yeah, they should have the night before Thanksgiving to set your cl- your scale back fifteen pounds. <laughs> I know, really. But it was nice. It was quiet. It was nice. It was you know, uh, just just uh, you know, actually feeling thankful for you know, whatever. So. Were you in Chino? Be honest. Did you ever go to Chino? Listen, I'm smart enough to cover my tracks. Yeah, I got to Wait, let me put a tracking device and an Uber thing where they're tracking me, and I'm going to go do something like that. I don't think so. That's the thing. Hey, congratulations to your wife. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Going to yeah. Tish. Yeah, she's very cool, cool. Patty. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, you know, I mean, she's uh, she's been studying film, working in, you know, she's done all kinds of shit. She's got something in common with your daughter. She produced uh, some off Broadway plays many years ago in New York. Wow! And she loves that kind of stuff, and she's always into b- being, uh, you know, making films. And it's the reason we moved out to Los Angeles. So, you know, just just taking some actions towards our goals. Sounds and, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, you know, hopefully put myself up for some commercial work and get back out there and start working again. What if she doesn't cast you, though? You mean Patty will film you? No, no, no. I'm oh, talking okay. about commercial work and stuff like that, you know, actual acting work. And I worked last weekend for the first time in a comedy club. Really? Live? Yeah, that's right. You uh, were that show. Yeah. Oh, by Zoom. He did it by Zoom. I worked He's... in a comedy club, and I thought that I would absolutely hate going back and I was actually on a show with actually two other acts that were funny. Right, and so the first guy, 
The first, no. yeah, which which paid it paid the way. The first guy was a very good looking black guy that reminded me of Eddie Murphy when he was young. He had that very charming look, and he had a joke in the middle of his act buried, and I told him he should open with it, and he started open with it, and it killed. And the joke was, he said, "Hey, there's no pressure on me being here. I'm just the MC." The middle guy's got to get some laughs. The headline has got to get big laughs. If you laugh at me, it's a bonus. If you don't laugh, I just go home and tell everyone in Cocoa Beach is a racist. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I me. Mean? I'm a I'm a sucker for opening great opening lines. Like I always told you about your opening line. Yeah. yeah. And uh and the show was really good. And then the next guy came out and said, looked around, there wasn't one black person except for him. And he goes, Cocoa Beach. This place should be called Vanilla Beach. <laughs> no, Can- Cocoa Beach. That's where uh, I dream a genie, right? Isn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, and yeah. by the way, I know Wednesday. I don't know if it's, I think cancel it, but they were going to shoot off a rocket. Was that from somewhere over there? Cocoa they shoot it tonight. Tonight they, they changed it till tonight. Yeah. Well, who's right. shooting? SpaceX. Uh, who? I think it's space. I think it's SpaceX is shooting. Off I think it's a, a big one. I think it's a Falcon Heavy. Yeah, Falcon Heavy. Yeah, so Craig, you well, that, agree, and if you want to dispose of your evidence, that might be the place to. Uh, yeah, yeah. And wait, I got to tell you a funny thing. At the end of Saturday Night Show, oh. this guy, this guy comes up to me, and and it was great. I sold out the place, which is amazing. The woman was really happy, and I have a pretty good following there. And you wouldn't think so because it's kind of a tourist thing, but it's mostly locals. And this guy comes up to me, and he goes. Dude, you rock. Every time I'm here, I come to see you. This is the fourth time I've come to see you. And I said, oh, thank you very much. He reaches into his wallet, takes out $20 bills, and he throws it in my suitcase, and he goes, buy yourself some tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I'm not taking your money. And he goes, shut up. And he ran yeah, out the door. That's that's like so Italian. Every Italian I've ever known, they like pull out some I, there you go. Get yourself something nice. How you doing? All right. I could you go there. If he's in the audience, you hold up a box of tricks. I bought the clown. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I laughed about it all the way home. Hey, go buy yourself some I'm, tricks. I'm sorry, but if I'm in a club and I've had it where they've come, you know, come up afterwards and tip me up, I'm, I'm taking the money, man. I'm taking the money. I never got tipped ever. Ever. All I was working. Was, all I get was you were funny too. That's all I ever remember. They were, you were, they were like, Craig, you were. Oh, you were on the show? Oh, you were the no. first? No, get, oh. Being the MC, it's always like the headliner. You were great. You were so funny. Then in the middle, oh, I love that, but you did. And they look at me and go, you were funny, too. Yeah. Okay. You were there. I, I, you were, my you, favorite, you, one of my favorite things was after a show, Minervini and I were standing outside. I was headlining, and uh, and there was, a, I forget who the middle act was, and I lit up a cigarette, and the guy comes out, and he goes, man, you were really funny. He goes, you were so funny. You were all right, Sister Richie. The middle guy goes, yeah, you were okay, too. Yes. But you were really, really funny. Yeah. You got another cigarette? <laughs> oh, my God. I remember times, and this happened more than once, and, and I, I'm not saying anything. I'm not a whatever. But times when I was middling, and you're standing out there, you know, and people coming up after the show, and, and the headliner's right there, and they're telling me, you were the funniest on the show. You were, you were the bad. And I'm like, you know... What do you say? You know, it's like you got to thank them. It's I like, always say when they say that. When the other, never, never. I happened. always say that when the guys just stand next to you. I always go, "Hey, it's not a contest." You feel like funny when they say it about you, and the other guys are standing there. Yeah. I was at. Uh, remember Grandpa's Comedy Alley, or whatever it was right? Well, well, Jimmy's. Well, Jimmy's was Jimmy's Comedy, Comedy Alley. Alley, right? Yeah. So I was. Remember, I used to do a trick where I borrow the guy's money, and I would. Put it in an envelope and set it on fire, and then I cook marshmallows. Love that bit. Love yeah. that bit. So there's this I real still mafia. My twenty back, by the way, John. There's a real mafiosa guy in the front row, and I'm an idiot, you know. So I go, "Hey, sir, would you come up?" And he's got two bodyguards at separate tables. Oh, that's and, cool. I, and they stand there, and he comes walking up, right? And he's like, kind of laughing, like I can't believe he actually called me up. Yeah. And he starts walking up, so I start being an idiot. I am start humming the Godfather theme. Do, 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 right? And he gets kind of a chuckle. He comes up. I kneel down. I kiss his ring. <laughs> so I go, you got $100. I want to do this trick. So he takes out this wad. <laughs> and he goes, you just need oh, one. Shit. You just need one. I go, yeah, one's fine. I give it to him. I go, sign your name. And he goes, Vinny. You just need one. Yeah, he, go, he writes Vinny. And he turns over. And I go, 
What's your name? He goes, Vinny. I go, I'm shocked. <laughs> and But he had a really good sense of humor. He was laughing. So I do the whole trick, and I set up the money, and I'm burning the money. I'm cooking the marshmallows. I'm eating the marshmallows. Yeah, open up your envelope. Show everyone that your money's in there. He takes the envelope. He goes, it is fucking money is in here. I'm going to shit right here on the fucking stage. <laughs> right? So he rips it open. He goes, it's gone, and you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now I know he's got a good sense of humor, right? So I go, but in this wallet, I in my pocket that's completely zippered all three sides is another envelope. And he goes, Don't tell me it's in there. Hey, <laughs> and I, shit know, right like, here. Yeah, he goes, because I will shit right here if that money's in there. Right. So I take it and rip it open. And he goes, Holy shit, this is my money. Look, both sides, Vinny. And I go, and I go, hey, no problem. So I hand him back his money. He takes the hundred dollar bill and he shoves it in my pocket. And he goes, hey, you made me laugh and everything. I really thought it was gone. That's for you, you know. Nice. And he goes back to see hundred bucks, right? So after the show, I walk in the back and <laughs> TMC goes, yeah, the problem with you headliners, you just don't make enough money. <laughs> you know, he was probably making like twenty dollars. Talking so about I walk. That they go, wait, you wait. Not, oh, you're not. I'm sorry. No, no. I walk up to the guy at the end, and as I walk up, these two bodyguards jump up, you know, and I go, "Hey, hey, relax." And I go uh, to the guy. I go, "Listen, uh, you know, hey, I really appreciate it, but you know, I don't take your money." And he got really serious. He goes, "That money's for you. Don't disrespect me." Don't ever disrespect me like that. And he goes, "He goes, just don't disrespect me. That is for you." That is a gift. You should have told me. I go, wait, wait. Respectful if you gave me 500 And I go, well, thank you very much. He goes, you want to do something? Make some balloons for the girls. Oh, shit. And I'm like a clown. I'm like a clown. <laughs> so you went, you went from being his respected act to being his little fucking shoeshine boy. Yeah, why don't you say, boy yeah exactly. Like Exactly. Hey, now, I just want to say this one thing. I know I'm sorry interrupting you there, Craig. But oh, I just okay. I'm used to it. Because it's. You should be. So uh, anyway, <laughs> I just want people to know on the show, John Ferentino is is not only a funny man, but he is an incredible magician. If you ever have a chance to go see John, I get to catch him at, the, you know, I've known him for 30 years, but I'm just saying I still love sitting down watching his act. You will not see a oh, better thanks. show. Just, yeah, you can you can interrupt me anytime to say something. I that's great, you. Craig. Anyway, John, what I was saying, <laughs> John is one of my idols, man. I, I love John is hilarious. And I'd like to say that of all the murderers I know, Craig takes the cake. Yeah, you bet. I, I want to see you talking about somebody ever come up to you and say you should be headlining. That did actually happen to me once early in my career in Syracuse. I was yeah, working. But your mom school. doesn't count. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. Hey, Mike, you, you're going to like this story because I was up there in Lucy's. It was Lucy's in the Holiday Inn in Syracuse. Right. And it was a two man show. I went up first, and I'm going to say the name. I don't give a shit. Kent Casper went up second. I don't Not know. Not Kent Casper. Kent Casper. Never heard of him. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, there's a reason for that. I heard of him. No, so, yeah. So I, I, I did my thing. I killed. I come up, and I'm standing in the audience. There's nowhere, to, there's no green room. I'm like sitting at the bar, whatever. And there was all these bikers. It was like Hell's Angels, right? And they start ripping him apart on stage. And one guy who was bigger than you, Mike, comes up to me and goes, you are fucking funny. He goes, you want us to beat the shit out of him and throw him off stage so you can do more time? I'm like, no, 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 let him finish. Should have said, yeah, that would have been cool. Well, in retrospect, John, yes, I should have. But uh, (laughs) I was a bouncer in a biker bar, and these guys scare me. You know, yeah. it's like it was when I started doing comedy because it was like I remember a couple of times I, I was with uh, John Trucin once and we went up to somewhere in Vermont or whatever. And, and and the first thing we walk in, we meet the club owner. And the first thing he says is, oh, thank God they sent a couple of big guys after what happened last week. <laughs> <laughs> and the parking lot was all full of pickup trucks and Harleys. And I was like, oh, I don't worry about those guys because I can make them laugh. You know, I've, it's like. Those are my though. people. I can make anyone laugh, but especially though. But Trucin, Trucin doesn't know. And if and nobody out there they know who John Trucin is, but we we, we were at a at a at, a, at a, a club, a strip club. One. This is long, long time ago. 
and uh, who, who walks in, but with these, one of the most dangerous motorcycle gangs in Long Island. I don't know if I want to mention their names or not. But anyway, so uh, uh, we're sitting there, and John, you know, we're having a couple of drinks, and he's got to be Mr. Funny Man, and he's going, hey, Mike, those guys outrank you, and he's making joke, and I'm like, John, you don't understand. They'll come over, they'll kill you, and they'll kill me for being with you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, they'll kill you I, I for not one joke. I remember one joke from John Trusen's act. He used to go, quick oppression, uh, Mary Crosby's doorbell, Bing's gone. That's all I remember. I remember oh, the songs. Oh, his name is Teddy Kennedy. He's the leader, leader of the clan. The, the famous Boston Kennedy is the nose throughout the land. Oh, yeah, Jack and Bob are superstars, but Teddy is kind of bland. Except when he drives to swim for your lives and try to reach dry land. Oh, oh brother, yeah, brother. Brother. <laughs> his brother is oh, dead. Oh, yeah, his brother is dead. His brother is dead. His dead. His mother is dead. His brother is dead. And, and cars don't, don't float. float. Hey. hey. <laughs> John owes us money now. Well, no, actually, we owe him money. We just stole no, part no, of his money. And now. he's probably still doing. I, think he's, listen, I thought he was booking governors. <laughs> right. Right. Is he booking Remember, I, never I, I, I take that out. back and apologize, John. No. But John, John never. did the funniest video I ever remember. Uh, he used to show a video before his show. And it was the beginning of a Little House. You know the beginning of a Little House on the Prairie where the girls mm-hmm. are all running down the hill? Yeah. Well, he has a thing where you see the girls run down the hill and it cuts to Mr. Edwards and Michael Landon and they point up, right? And you see the girls running and the littlest girl is still running and Mr. Edwards goes like this with his gun and it fires and the little girl falls. <laughs> That's it's right. fucking hilarious. Me and John were going to do a, we were going to do a show. It was actually, it was a, 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 a variety show, but it was the weirdest thing. It was called Festa Purvis's Padded Funhouse. And it was, I was the star of my own kids, uh, little variety show. Oh, but the shit. thing is, I was locked up in a mental hospital, chained to the floor, and the whole show took place in my mind. <laughs> hey, <laughs> John Trusey is the, the Joker. You know that, right? What's that? That's the movie Joker. Well, this was 40 years ago, so I, don't I know. It was the movie Joker. <laughs> Man, John used to do like movie posters, too. Like, yeah. like graphic movie posters, you know? Like he would change them. I can't remember. He would combine two of them, like uh, Mrs. Doubtfire and Top Gun. Hey, let's <laughs> like, talk about Mrs. Doubtfire about, starter. We, let's talk about a guy that we don't have as a guest. This is this is what we used to yell at other people who used to be on the show about talking about people who nobody knows. Yeah. Well, but that's funny. I mean, we're explaining what's funny kidding. about it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, he was in my yeah. he was in my improv group for a year. Really. Yeah. Yeah, cool, he's, cool. He's funny, funny dude. Very funny. Those were the days, man. Those were my favorite comedy days back in Long Island and Queens and all over, running around the the the, the tri-state area and, and just uh, without just, a doubt. I remember the late great Bob Woods once said to me once when we all started headlining and we were all going to different places. We really didn't work together that much anymore, all of us. And he said, "Have I ever thought that it would come out like this? I don't know if I would have done this." I just assumed we'd always be all working together, you know, because no, it was so much fun, you know. Yeah, we no, should no. All, we should do a shot uh, thing, a shot of Geritol or something like that. Every time one of us mentions a dead comic, yeah. <laughs> then don't have Fred Stoller on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, but yeah, it was fun back then, you know. Yeah. Now okay. we sell like now we sell like those four old Scotmen. In my day, you know, I know, right? In my day, we told five jokes while walking uphill, but you know, <laughs> we had to walk three miles upstage in the snow just to get to the stage, and we didn't have a microphone. What I'll we just had to cup our hands. What I'll say is, here's the difference. And today, I feel bad for comics today. I don't think there's going to be stand up comics in the future. I feel I bad for so comics either. today. First of all, you have to bring your own audience. You have to bring, see what we, when comedy, when we were doing comedy, the club would attract an audience. I would walk to Jimmy's or whatever, go sure. in these places, and they were lined up around the corner just to get in. They didn't care who was going on. They knew no, it was going to be fun because it was always fun because the clubs wouldn't hire you unless you were a good professional seasoned comic. You know, today, you know, there's so many comics, and most of them, like we've always talked about, are freaking horrible. They're not really comics. They're people who make somebody laugh at work once, and t- somebody told them, hey, you should get up on a stage. You're not for- I have a friend. I have a friend who's been doing who's been doing open mic comedy for four years, and now he's announcing that he's doing his own special. And I'm like, 
how is that going to work out? You, you I know. Not, I mean, it used to be you have to work on the road and you have to you have to go through the mill. You have to pay your dues. Yeah, you have to get road. You have to get road savvy in order to. Well, close to inter- I think an interesting fact is, like Mike was saying, in those days, like when we first started, the clubs were packed. You know, yeah. and then what happened is a lot of the cheap club owners said, "Well, we're going to be packed anyway. It doesn't matter who we have this weekend." Yeah. And then all of a sudden they started losing the crowd. But if you look at the clubs, which I hate to even mention this name by name, but governors, um, you know, that never did that. They always maintained to have a good show. Yeah. And all of the clubs that did that, like that still, I, I can't even think of many clubs that did it. Catch a Rising Star in Princeton still does it. They have good shows. And they've never lost. They have really good shows too, man. Where? The Brokerage. Yeah, brokerage, I guess. Yeah, brokerage. But all of those places that never chinsed out on the axe to make yeah. money for them are still in business. Well, that's just so, it. Because if you know that you're going to go here, and I don't have to recognize the guy's name, but I know he's going to make me laugh because this club right. doesn't hire crappy comics, then it's all right to go spend your money. But if you've been there before and you know that, oh, this guy's gone on the stage because he's brought 20 people or he's friends with this guy, it's like, I don't want to spend my money. I'm spending a couple of hundred dollars to go and see somebody who's going to, you know, be maybe a little humorous or I'm going to feel awkward because he sucks, you know? Right. And, you know, go ahead, go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. I, I went to the. I went to the. Greg, ice go ahead. Match. What were you going to say? I, I went to the. Greg, ice John interrupted you. So I, I, why don't you I just went, tell I us went, what you were going to say? I went. To, I, I went. To, yeah. I, I, oh, okay. Are you done? What's that? I went. I went. So anyway, to, John, what I need to tell you. I went. I went. <laughs> shut up. Let him talk. I went. I went. I went. I went. I went. I'm <laughs> stuttering now. <laughs> I went to the Ice House once, and it was to watch open mics. My friend, my friend, who's my boss and friend, and and it was all like kind of amusing, like oh, it's pretty good. And then I knew, I remember the comic's name, Quinn Dale. I don't know if you know him. I think mm-hmm. you know him. Right? No, he you went know, up. He I'm terrible nuked, with names. He nuked the joint, and we're sitting there going, "Oh, that's what real comedy is it's supposed to be like." Okay, all right. Yeah. I mean, the difference is just like night and effing day, man. And the that was audience- like the first. Okay. The audience is waiting for it. They, that's the beautiful thing is they don't want the comic to fail. The audience wants you to do well. Yeah. They're there supporting. They're, you know, it's like nobody wants to feel awkward like that. So you have to be really fucking bad to die most of the time on. Or it has to be an awkward situation. Like I remember, you know, the, 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 the one of the wars, I think it was the first Gulf War. Was just, you know the first Scud missile had just hit Israel, and I was in a That's... a club, and they had those big you know sets, and you know first Scud missile hits Israel. All right, are you guys ready for a show? So yeah, that oh, could be geez. a situation where the comedy is not going to go over because the audience is you know. Okay, you want to hear the worst intro in history? This is it. Me- <laughs> this is it. Me. This is. I mean, I'm laughing now, but it's really not funny. Years ago, you'd pull into Nassau, and all the kids would be on the dock. And people would throw coins off the ship and they would dive because the water is like yeah. a swimming pool mm-hmm. and they would dive down to get the coins. And so the diving of the coins was over and they were tying up the ship. And there was a kid about eight years old sitting on the piling. The front rope snapped and cut this kid in half. Oh, I mean, like brutal, brutal. I mean, the rope like went halfway through him. And this was when everyone had those big video cameras. They're all videotaping it and stuff, you know. So they run out and they cover him with a blanket. And the helicopter comes in. They get the kid. So my friend Andy Andrews, who is working that night, and the cruise director, Brian Blackwood, proper English gentleman with an ascot, comes out and goes, oh, for those of you that are interested, I just want to say that if you've if you witnessed the unfortunate incident on the pier today at approximately 0300, I just want to say that, uh, unfortunately, the little chap has passed away. If you would like to send your condolences, the pursers have their information. You can send them a little condolence, maybe a little cheer up. And now here to make you laugh, oh. Andy Andrews. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, right before he goes, and I repeat, the little boy Seven years old, did pass away, but now to may hear you make you laugh, Andy Andrews. 
I mean, it's like, are you kidding? But, you know, that sounds bonus. like a Lenny Bruce bit. Remember the, the palladium, the ball bit, the palladium. But on the bonus side of that, the two Russians in the audience had a nice appetizer. Uh, <laughs> Tender. Uh, veal. I get, we're back to Joe again. Here's, here's just a warning. Some stories on the Big Bad Quarkast may not be suitable for younger viewers or younger listeners. <laughs> Well, this, well this come on, you must have had some bad intros, right? Well, oh, I've is... had some terrible intros, yeah. What are, tell me one of those. Oh, my God. Just, just you know, first, Mike, thinking I'll go. I'm trying to think of in Yeah, particular. you go first, Mike, I'll go. No, it's, yeah, and, you, I mean, you, you first, you go ahead. Guy, when I, hold on, wait one second. He's going to get his knife out. Come on, Craig. Come on. What is that knife possibly for? <laughs> Intruders. <laughs> just for picking my teeth. This isn't even one of my bigger nuts. Now, actually, I've got some... I collect knives. Listen, some people, I love them, you know what I mean? Because I don't like to listen. People... Uh, I like guns, too, you know, and this isn't whatever it is, but I don't need a gun, you see? I, I'll just push the bullets in by hand. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, how not, many... Uh, wait, how many... many is, what all right, let's, let's change subjects here. How I many knives do you a, have? Well, I mean, without talking about kitchen knives and shit like that, I'm talking right. about, I probably have at least, I don't know, 50 or 60. Are you serious? Yo, really? Man. And that's. And I that's, have 50 I have, or 60 yo-yos. You, you, have, you have 50 or 60 knives and the police are calling me, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. But well, because, no. you know, you, you got you to also learn how to hide your tracks, Craig. Oh, maybe we could do that each week. We do a knife segment with Mike Grief. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one I is for Dutton. Be- Feeling stabby. Really Seriously, what is a knife like that used for? I'm serious. I'm not this being funny. Well, it's got this got on this end. You actually can break the window of your car. A knife like this. What would you use it for? I don't know. You could use it for you know scratching your head, your back. You know, it's good for I mean, that. Is a massive knife. I just collect them. I don't ask people what they use them for. <laughs> oh, so you get them from people on the street? Nice knife. <laughs> hey, I don't know. This is you know. I don't like. I said this is more of a. Kind of like I think you would, you know, you can cut your seatbelt if you were stuck in a car because it's got this thing for breaking the window. Belt. You can cut off a limb with that. Yes, you yes, can. you can cut off your body in half if you can't get out of the yeah, seatbelt. I mean, you hey, you know, like good for you. Never know when you're going to hit a deer. You know, I mean, yeah, like, hit a deer. You got, <laughs> you got to take his paw it's off. Hoof. It's a little hoof. No, it's a hoof. The hoof was in the it's tough. It's a hoof. I mean, I'm carving a turkey right now. How you doing? That would be good for cutting the legs and the wings off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually, I've like if you watch any of those these these shows that are real popular, it's the only reality shows that I like. I do not like you know I don't like reality shows, but I like the ones like Life Below Zero. You know when they're surviving out there and you know hunting animals and stuff. And most of those are little pretty small knives, what they skin you know skin animals with. Do you guys watch? Do you ever see that survival guy on TikTok who can make anything out of nothing? He's like. Diver? He's like, I was just going to say, he's like a modern MacGyver. Someone will go, can you make a uh, a deer overcoat? He's like, yes. You know, and he yeah. takes, he has a skin, and then he has like a needle that he made out of bone, and he takes like I have fibers a and weaves. I have a buckskin up. shirt. There you go. Davey Crooked. You know, I, I always had an idea. I Come on, idea. that was funny. I'm Davey laughing. Crooked. I'm laughing over here. Davey Crooked. I, I was so anxious to get my line out that I completely over uh, overtalked yours. I'm sorry. What was yours, Davey Crooked? No, no, <laughs> no I was going to say, I at one point, I wanted to do a, a new version of Gilligan's Island with MacGyver on it, and they're rescued. So that's it. That's the end of it. There you go. It's, it's over. It's Show's over. Episode. And they're rescued. And they're rescued. Uh, gee, little buddy. <laughs> yeah, they. Um... Well, here's the age old controversy Marianne or Ginger? Skipper. Gin- Ginger. Skipper. Skipper. He doesn't know how Skipper. Awkward... <laughs> Skipper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you why, but I think you'd be disgusted. We don't want to know why. I'm not. I'm not going to describe why I would watch uh... him sit with his legs spread. He he has he has a uh, you know he has trouser knee. Let's just say that. Okay. I'm checking out Skipper's package. No, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I don't think that's. Gonna, I don't I'm think not that's. Gonna check out the Skipper's package. I think that's a statement that none, most people in the world have never heard. I always hey, wanted. Skipper, I always wanted him that's to quite a cock you're carrying around here, Skipper. Hey, little buddy, <laughs> nice package, Skipper. 
Jesus. Is that how you judge shows? Hey, remember Leave it to Beaver? Yeah, I wore that a cock like no one knows. <laughs> Did you like the monsters? Yeah, Grandpa was hung like a motherfucker. Herman. 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 Herman actually wasn't hung. Herman like was hung like a bat. Hung like a bat. Like actually a woman. Woman. Hung like a bat. <laughs> like a bat. Little Eddie. Little Eddie. Yeah, had a cock like a bat. His cock can find you in the dark. Jesus. All right, the show has devolved. Yeah, totally. Wow. I didn't. I didn't like Thing because he didn't have one at all. Hey, I guess. I guess it's fair because you know it's like uh, you know when we were young watching Marianne and Ginger and shit like that. Trust me, I guess we weren't looking for the toe, but we were checking out the whole thing. I didn't even know what a camel toe was toe. then. Well, now you know. You know. You know that over forty, it's a foot. It's a camel foot. <laughs> Oh, oh my uh, God! I'll tell you, when I was young, I used to pretend. This is all on my Christmas special. People, people, people would come up to me and go, "Who do you like better, Marianne or Ginger?" And I would say, "Oh, of course, Ginger." I mean, I had to lie. I mean, I, I was secretly into you know the skipper. What are you, you going to say, the skipper? You get beat, you get beat up in, in junior high school. Yeah, well, back. I'm going to beat you up right now for thinking that. <laughs> You know, so that's what I don't understand. I mean, I can understand. I can understand if you get, if he was like, I'm not gay, so it's hard for me to do. I would understand if there was like the professor, even. You'd go, oh, he's a good looking guy, you know? Hold on one right. second. It's a cop again. Hello? Suspect Craig. Yeah, can you? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I'm. I'm. I'm not leaving this state. Uh, I swear. I'm not leaving this state. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, you I'm want my passport? <laughs> I'm no not, problem. No problem. I can identify the guy. No problem. I, I yeah, he's like sixty guy, years no old. He's gray hair. Old, gray beard. Gray beard. Wait a minute! Respect. No. <laughs> they're on the way. <laughs> I tell you, they'll save this show. Oh no, but when you get arrested on the air. Well, let's get back to what I was saying. I mean, I would think as a man, well, I'm a gay man, I guess, and I'm not. I mean, how do you, like, out of all of those guys on the show, why would you take him? Um, Just because well, he had a big bulge I, in his I, pants? I, I, no, that's that's a joke. But uh, Oh, okay. No, I've seen me. Well, no, the, the, I, I you have to tell the truth. Did he actually have a bulge? Yes, I have people who actually share pictures of him with his. Now that's funny to me fruit. because in the old days they couldn't even show a male dog on the fucking on TV because Look, it had penis. I, but Skipper had a package hanging up. I am not your typical gay guy. Okay, I'm not. I'm not your, because you know no. I'm not. I, I'm. I have very eclectic tastes. Let's just say that. So the Skipper, yeah, he's in control. He wears a uniform. Cool. <laughs> A uniform. He had a fucking hat. I know. Gilligan, Gilligan had the same uniform, uniform. right? Gilligan yes. had the same uniform, but it was only like quarter of the size. Yeah, you know, nobody. No, Gilligan had a floppy hat. He didn't have a captain's. Yeah, ball nobody there. wants That's Gilligan. The and the professor. Come on, seriously. I think the professor and Mister Howe were doing something in the woods. They really do. Hey, Jim Backus was a hell of a guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And make fun of Mister. Mag- you make fun of Mister Magoo. Mr. Magoo is so unbelievably un PC they can't even bring him back. Is that true? Yeah, because they, they're making fun of blind people. My dad used to love oh that. Oh my god. I my, hate this PC bullshit world. You can't say or do anything. I used to love the ending of his beginning of the cartoon when he drive his car into the electric station. It's like you know. I'm gonna say some of the most unpolitical P un PC shit right now. And that's what I feel about it. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the big, bad broadcast. Getting to know the three of us nut jobs a little bit better. And uh, we're here every week. You can catch us on our website, the www.thebbbradio.com. And we're on Facebook, the big, bad broadcast. You can find the shows. You can, And if you just want to don't have time to watch the show, and you're at work or you're working out, you can catch the podcast on our website. And that is the same address of www.thebbbradio.com. And uh, we're all going to be here next week. Hopefully Craig won't be in jail. 
That's right. And, and don't forget uh, buy the uh, buy the the merch, uh, the big bad broadcast. We got uh, the toilet paper. You can wipe your ass with the uh, toilet paper from the show. Yes. <laughs> and now we have handcuffs. You can buy these too. That's it. And they also and, come in uh, leopard skin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Leopard skin, and uh, you know, here's 20 bucks. Buy yourself some tricks. Yeah, see you next week, everybody. All right, right, bye bye. Thank you, Mike and Craig. Thank you, John. Thank you, Craig. Bye. And hey, the rest of you fuckers, you better be good because Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you whether you're naughty or nice, and he's got a sack as big as the skipper. Well, blow me down. Oh, my God. That was very funny, though. All right. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) Please remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thank you.